We're on. We're on, yes. Okay, my name is Gary Antonoff, and I was co-chairman of the Finance Committee for uh, Coors Field when we needed to have the vote to have a sales tax to pay for the new stadium. I was appointed by uh, Governor Romer uh, at the time. I had just completed working at the uh, on the Finance Committee for the airport, so I had spent uh, the three years prior to the Coors Field Endeavor uh, raising money for that project, and uh, I guess Governor Romer thought that uh, I would be able to help uh, get this job done, and it was a great experience and a great amount of fun to meet the people that I met uh, and to work with uh, with Joe Blake, who uh, has been a good friend since high school. Joe was a uh, head boy when I was at East High in my class, and so I've known Joe forever, and always fun to work with Joe, and a very talented and a very accomplished uh, person, so he was very good. Um, it, was, it was an endeavor that uh, I think everybody thought would be a good one for Denver, for downtown Denver, for Lodo. Um, I live downtown and had seen what was happening and what that area where Coors Field now stands magnificently. Uh, I saw what it was like with the uh, homeless and with everything that was going on. It was the perfect spot for Coors Field. It was in line with Pepsi Center, with uh, the football stadium. Um, and we put together a good group of people that uh, continued to work hard to raise the money to get this job done. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. I think the greatest experience that I had, that I remember, was when we put together a plane load of people and went to Chicago. We saw a Cubs game. We went uh, and saw the construction of the new Comiskey Park. Uh, had dinner at uh, Harry, Harry Carey's. Harry Carey's. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, and flew back home. Uh, a tiring day, but uh, one that I think got everybody to really understand how important baseball could be to our community. How important it was to Chicago and what it can do for our economy, uh, for just the spirit of our of our community. So that was a that was a wonderful experience for me, and I think I hope for everybody who joined us that day. Um, I don't know what, well, what well, talk, we'll talk be glad to ask you some yeah, questions. Yeah, that'd that's be good. Helpful. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, so it was one thing to pass the election, and I know some individuals had said that really you're going to screw this up. If we lose this election, we've really killed any chances that we have of um, re getting Major League Baseball here. Did you ever feel that pressure or? Well, I think we all felt the pressure, but I think we were all very optimistic because I think it was just another, I think Denver was in an, uh, a time then when things were starting to get better economically. I think that we all, the people who were working on this project, wanted to be part of that. Uh, a lot of them came off the airport uh, project. And I think that uh, there's always pressure. You know, you don't want to lose. Nobody wants to lose. And, and certainly the people that we were, that I was working with, that Joe and I were working with, uh, were a bunch of successful people. And, but we thought we could win. We thought we, you know, if we did it right, if we raised the money that we needed to, and we had a lot of help from the commission in general. Uh, there wasn't anybody on the commission who, if we called them, was not willing to make a call or to do something from Neil or, or uh, Gil Whiteley, uh, who was very helpful. So it was, it was a great effort. So, um, did you get a lot of money right away in the campaign? Well, I think we thought we had a lot of money, but you know, you never think you have enough because there's always, there's always ways to spend it. You know, and we weren't, when you raised the money, I mean, it wasn't our part to spend it. So, there were people that were 
doing the campaigns and we just tried to raise enough to keep the the process moving and that was our goal and I think we we did that but there was always you know there were people who said no there were people who said no I don't want to be part of that I don't think you're going to win I don't think it's it's worth doing let the people who are going to own the team own the stadium you know we don't need to support them it's going to be a very profitable enterprise which it has turned out to be <laughs> in spades, in spades. Um, well you know I think when you look at campaigns today and how much money is spent on media and I know that this campaign didn't really spend any money on media they did a very targeted focused um, iron ironing board brigade or just going directly to the people and um, it was my understanding that that's basically the kind of budget that you guys had to work with and and one of the real blessed events was a check that came from Bill Daniels Bill was I've known Bill again I mean I knew Bill for years and he was absolutely I think he, he put it over the top there's no there's no question about it. I mean all these small donations that we got and our job was just again we weren't we didn't do the budget as to where the money was going to be spent what we did was try to raise the money to be able to fund that budget and we didn't really have we weren't privy to what it was totally but we just kept out there raising money from those people that we thought could help that effort but Bill was terrific and did you feel it was kind of a bipartisan effort on raising money or was it kind of one party or oh, I, I didn't ever feel that it was one party or the other I felt it was just a community effort yeah I never felt that way right so um, the campaign went on how did you did you think you know, on election night before the results came in that we were... We were all nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we were all very nervous, but, you know, because the polls, whatever they were doing, showed it was very close. There were a lot of people who just didn't think this was the right thing for the community to be doing. But it passed, and then, of course, you know, sitting in the stadium on... at Mile High Stadium on... Opening day. Opening day, April of 93. Wow, what a, what a treat. So, you know, one of the obstacles, certainly to overcome, we certainly had to overcome um, the legislative piece and then the election mm -hmm. piece, only to find that we didn't have an ownership group. Were you engaged in any part uh, of that? I was not. I was not. That was a, a totally different, there were different groups doing different things throughout this campaign, I think. I was not involved in that. I knew the people who were, and I knew what they were going through, and that was an issue. Obviously, you work hard to get it and then wind up with a stadium and no owner, but fortunately, it worked out well. Yeah, Kathy talks about it as being a relay race. I mean, it, it started back in the 60s with Bob Housum, and he did his thing, and then Marvin Davis tried, and Federico said, right. Federico set up the Denver Baseball Commission, and then we got the Colorado Baseball Commission. And you had the Johnny DeCue. Yep, Johnny yeah, DeCue. Yeah, yeah. And, and With finally, his efforts. The, the last big piece was the ownership group and, and getting designated. So. It, it, and we got designated at the same time as Florida, right? The Marlins? Right. They got their franchise at the same time we did. Well, I think an, another piece, too, was... Um, Certainly, we didn't even know that Major League Baseball was going to expand. Um, and uh, Tim Wirth, Senator Wirth, and uh, Congressman Schaefer started holding some antitrust hearings back in Washington, D.C., and miraculously made the, <laughs> the door opened up. Oh, yeah. yes. yes, I do remember that. That's good, yes, Kathy. Yes. That's a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's what, 25, 28 years ago already. That we it's, were doing this. Isn't that incredible? It really is. Neil tells me that Coors Field is now the third oldest ballpark in the country. Is it really? Yes. Third oldest National League ballpark in the country. Isn't that amazing? 
That is just incredible. Because it still seems kind yeah. of new to me. Well, I mean, when you and it's beautiful. Yes. I mean, they really did a great job with it. It's beautiful. I think it fits into the neighborhood well. What do you think it did for the neighborhood? Oh, it cleaned it up. I think it that whole it and it continues. I mean, now it's Rhino. Before it was, you know, just along around the ballpark, the ballpark lofts and and everything that happened around there. Now it's just continuing, just getting better all the time. It's been a very successful franchise, and it's been very successful for the city. Well, I think one of the things Federico had mentioned was, you know, he had an economic development study that showed that that whole Platte Valley was underutilized economically. And um, to the extent where you can place some governmental projects in there that kind of jumpstart growth, I think that's, that's exactly right. It's proof yeah. that he was right. I, I think it was interesting when they were talking about the, uh, the Anschutz piece, uh, because that, again, was downtown. But this just, I think, spread the economic development over the city more than, than that site would have. I, I think it was a great pick. And how did you, did you I assume, went to opening day at Coors Field? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And how did you feel that day? Well, I think I, I felt the best, honestly, just Major League Baseball being here at Mile High Stadium that day when EY hit his home run. But going to Coors Field and sitting in your seats was just awe-inspiring. It really was. It was a, an experience you'll never forget. You I still see. like to go. <laughs> Not quite up. as often as I used to. <laughs> <laughs> and I only live four blocks away. So, you know, one of the other then challenges that we certainly met was even once we put together an ownership group, then very quickly we had to put together a presentation for Major League Baseball. Were you engaged in any? I was not. I was strictly fundraising. That was strictly my my role, uh, other than what we did in the baseball commission, but not individually, not to the degree that I was involved in the fundraising. Well, I know one of the stories that um, <clears throat> Paul Jacobs told, I think, was a pretty incredible story in that um, when Major League Baseball came out. Uh, to look at Denver. Um, they, we were told not to do any big splash of any kind, and of course we didn't pay attention to that and we did a big deal. And um, one of the things that we have is a tape that Neil caused to be uh, produced called Time Zone Without a Team, in which um, the name of Bob Euchre was the narrator of that particular thing. And we were kind of selling it on 360 days of sunshine. And uh, he said that Major League Baseball came, saw, did their thing, and as the plane was leaving, about two hours later, we started to have snow. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? That was March 26th. Is, so that, is happens that right? March. Sure it does. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Often. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost as if the stars were aligned in a very good you, way. You know what? When you look at something like this, this project, I think the great part is that there were so many people involved doing different things and successfully whether it be your role in with the Colorado government, whether it be everybody's role was a little bit different, but everybody worked well together and got the job done. This is one yeah. of the things that Federico says too, that he's often asked to speak around the country um, because of the community cooperation that was here and that how many people did pull together and, and not compete against And, and he has a lot to do with that. Yes, yes. He has a lot to do with that. I think he attracts people who want to work with him, work for him, get to, to accomplish his, his goals. And I felt that way on the airport. I just felt like he let the, the, the process take care of itself, but he was always there. And I think that's another thing that's been so wonderful for this community. Well, you had some great involvement in the whole process. Do you have any final thoughts? Not really, just 
glad that we did it, glad that we spent the time doing it. And as you know, as you both know, it's very time consuming. It's not something that you take on a part-time basis. Right. It becomes a full-time job for as long as you're doing it. But it's got great rewards. And there were just a lot of people involved. I'm glad I had a small part to play in it. Well, and I think we think it's very important, not only that Colorado has baseball, but that I think it's a great lesson that it teaches to those who come after us in terms of maybe bipartisanship, how everybody can work together to make something positive happen. So. Great. Well, thank you very much. You could turn that off for a second because I just, <laughs> when, when 